Mankind has always fought for control. Whether through political influence or brute force, there is something in the human heart that seeks dominance. Countless nations have tried to wrest power from their neighbors. Of course, such actions are not without risk. I am well aware that there are many versions of Risk. That being the case, your game may not be exactly like mine. For instance, newer games have little soldiers to represent armies, whereas I have Roman numerals. Rules may differ slightly as well. Themed games may also have additional objectives that I will not be covering. In Risk, you have a map and you have armies. The goal of the game? Take over the world! The number of armies each player starts with depends on how many players there are. In this game, there are three players, so we will start with 35 armies each. Then, players take turns placing single army units in territories that they want to control. There are major benefits to controlling entire continents that we will talk about in a little bit, so this is where players can strategize, blocking opponents from having complete control over continents whilst trying to lay claim themselves. After all the territories have been claimed, players continue taking turns placing armies in forcing and amassing forces where the opponent is weakest or perhaps likely to make an attack. For instance, Yellow has a major force in Western Australia, as well as the majority of Asia. The other two players don't have much of a chance in the nearby islands, but as you can see, Red has plenty of soldiers in Asia's Western territories. Not only that, but Blue has a force that can sail from Alaska and strike from the east. Blue also has a large force in Great Britain, in preparation for the inevitable invasions from Red's European forces. After the players have placed all of their starting armies, the game can begin. There are three phases in a player's turn, reinforcement, battles, and finishing actions. I'm going to skip reinforcement for right now and show how battles work. Let's say Blue wants to invade Egypt from East Africa. Blue only has three units in East Africa, so that means Blue can only attack with two units as one must stay behind to protect East Africa. Blue rolls two dice as an attack for each of the Blue units, and Yellow rolls two dice for the two units defending. After the dice are rolled, they are compared with each other, highest to lowest. In this case, the highest defense was a 2 and the highest attack was a 5. That's one victory for the Blue. The next highest rolls are 4 versus 1, another victory for Blue. So for every loss, Yellow loses a unit. No Yellow units remain, and so Egypt falls to the might of the Blue. Flushed with pride, Blue turns its greedy gaze towards South America. The opposing forces are small, and the temptation to control an entire continent is too great. Blue strikes first at Peru, with three units, allowing for the maximum number of three attack dice. Yellow defends with only one unit, and so defends with only one die. The attack seems irresistible, with six at the top, but the yellow fights back with a six of their own. In the case of ties, the defending roll wins. The remaining attack rolls have no effect. Blue could retreat back into Brazil, but instead Blue sends in another unit to replace the one that was lost. This time, the rolls are not so fortunate, and Peru falls. Blue decides to march on through Peru and on to Argentina. Red defends with two, and so chooses to defend with the maximum number of defense dice. This time, however, each player gets a victory, which means in turn, each army loses a unit. Not willing to risk losing again, Blue retreats into Peru. So now that you know how battle works, let's look at a full turn. The first step is reinforcements, and you get one unit per every three countries that you own. So red team gets four. After laying out your reinforcements wherever you need them, it's time to move on to battles. And we've already covered this, so I'm going to fast forward it. During the battle phase, the basic idea is you want to take territories. Like right now, the Canadian Northern Territories are being taken over, and uh, that's pretty much all Red is able to do in this turn. But that's alright, you only need to take one territory in order to earn a risk card at the end of the turn. And now for the finishing actions. Red decides that he's left Ukraine pretty open after attacking from it so many times, so he moves any number of troops from one territory into another territory. And that's the ending action. He gets his risk card for his conquest of the Northern Territories, and his turn is over. 
And thus begins Yellow's turn, and he wants to take all of Australia for himself. And there is a reason he wants all of Australia. You see, by owning an entire continent, you actually get bonus armies every reinforcement round. By controlling all of Australia, Yellow will get two armies in addition to all the others that they would get at the beginning of their turn. That doesn't sound like much considering Asia gets you seven, but Australia is very easy to defend. So he will always be getting these two armies unless someone does a lot of work to get there. Another way to get extra armies is to trade in risk cards, and it has to be a group of three cards that have the same character on it, or a group of three cards that has totally different characters on each card. My version also comes with wild cards, which can help you make these sets. The number of armies you receive for trading in sets depends on how many sets have been traded. The first set only gets you four armies, but the second set gets you six. The third set gets you eight, the fourth set gets you 10, the fifth set gets you 12, and the sixth set gets you 15. From there, it goes up by fives. So your seventh set would get 20, eighth would get 25, and so on and so forth. And this is if any player trades in, not just one. One last basic way to get reinforcements is when you trade in cards, if you own any of the territories on the card, then you can add a single army to one of those countries. For instance, Red can put one in Afghanistan if he wants. The game is over when one player owns all of the board. This can take a long time, so <laughs> enjoy this game. And until next time, this is Hogwash, over and out. I'll catch you later.